I talked myself out of doing this twice. Out of doing this video. I talked myself out of doing it twice. But the reason I stepped up is because it seems no one else is going to say what I'm about to say. I'm not going to choose sides. I'm going to just lay it all over to you. But there's a big portion that I feel is missing. And this is why I think... Uh, uh, let me take you back. So all you hear now is Israelis at war. At war with who? They don't even say. <clears throat> There's a group called Hamas. Globally, all right, this group is known to be a... <laughs> scary guys. T-E-R-O-R. -R. Let me chill for my monetization. All right. Supposed bad guys. These bad guys, what's their what drives them? Their main goal is to, you know, eradicate or hopefully push out the the the, the Israeli settlers, as they call them, or the invaders, as the the Palestinians <laughs> know them as. All right, uh, happy Thanksgiving. You know how, you know, the white folks came and took it from the natives and gave the natives back. Same thing, I guess, repeating. I'm not here to hold positions. Long story short, this group called Hamas, um, it is based, obviously, because Palestine got took over and became Israel. They're based in places like uh, Lebanon and Jordan, scattered all over the place. Alright. Now Lebanon has their own terror groups or terror organizations such as Hezbollah. Hezb means the Hezb means party, but in a political sense. Like uh Hezb al Democrati, that's the Democratic Party. Hezb al Shiri, Communist Party. So Hezb Allah, that's what the name means, the party of Allah. So they claim to be religious, but in the same time, they do things that are totally against the religion. Like, <laughs> you know, the main thing that all terror groups do, that, that that's not right in uh, any religion, to be fair. You know? And they um, make their money off of the illegal drug trade. Um, mainly they grow cannabis and they grow, I believe, I'm not too sure, opiates. All right. Now, a few weeks ago, I was keeping up with a story of how Saudi Arabia and Iran have officially made peace after years of beefing. 2,000 years, probably, old beef. I think, or you know, one would think, if one knew, of course, <laughs> mostly I don't know, they were beefing, let alone made peace. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you something, break it all down in layman terms. The peace between Saudi Arabia and Iran, my opinion, the people behind that peace, behind them too, making peace, I think whoever <laughs> made that happen deserves a Nobel Prize. Because that beef is behind the war in Yemen, which is, let me tell you, but it's horrific. Of course you don't know about it, because, well, do your own research. I'm only here to, and by the way, I could be wrong, guys, so don't hit me with no disinformation. Take everything I say with a grain of salt, do your own research. Even if I say something that could be considered disinformation, I'm only human, so don't take anything I say as fact. I'll tell you right now. So listen, 
Arabia and, and Iran make peace, right? Hey, we cool. No more beef. All right, we're going to open an embassy in your place. All right, come do it. They got to open an embassy. Now the Saudi dude is supposed to give a speech at the, at the embassy at the, or at the place or whatever. But the Saudi dude, mind you, this beef is old. And even I don't like this dude that's, that they about to... There's a dude called Qasem Soleimani. Do your own research. When Trump... Remember when Trump dropped the drone on on a drone strike on Iran, and he came on TV like he's a drill rapper. He died like a dog. <laughs> Remember that? Cost him some money. I personally got reported on Instagram because I was listening to a Saudi song that was taking shot to him a diss song. But even though we made peace, I still tell you he's no hero of my eyes. I don't think Qasim was uh, was worthy of any praise, in my humble opinion. But why is Qasim a bad guy? Right? The Saudi dude was supposed to give a speech. Since, you know, they're making peace now. He's in Iran. Hey, let me go give a speech. They had a picture of Qasim. He's like, hey, yo, I'm not going on there. Take that down. Uh, please, please. He's like, nah, I know, please. I'll go back right now. Take that, that picture of Qasim. Okay. Why is Qasim the boogeyman? Well, it's a long story. But he used to be a general, you know, military general, big dude, whatever. But Iran has been sanctioned like a mother effer. For a long time. They don't got many friends, if any. Their methodology, the method of going at the ops, since they're sanctioned and they're, you know, pushed underground or whatever, they click up. You know, click, click, not like a click in mouse, click like a Q E, Q U E, like a, ain't nobody messing with my click, click, you know the song? So they team up with anybody who's also shunned like themselves. <laughs> For example, ISIS, Qaeda, Hezbollah, Hamas. And, you know, they come at it from the Islamic, because uh, the government over there is like super strict Islamic, right? Or claim to be. So when they go to Hamas and all them people, they are already on the same team mentally. And they both shun, so it's easy to... Uh, Qasim enters through that way, and Qasim got a whole nation behind him. Shunned or not, they got resources. Money, at least. So that boy Qasim goes up to these people and give them guns, uh, 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 training, money, lots of it, lots of it. And, and, and you know, things like um, rockets, rocket launchers, drones, all that type of stuff. All right? Now, just to put it in perspective, Bloods and Crips. You know, in America, it's a street gang. It's just a bunch of street dudes. Imagine somebody go up to these street dudes who all they got is probably a, a dirty gun and a dirty pair of Jordans. All right? You go up to them and give them a bunch of, uh, no offense to any watching. You go up to regular dudes like that, you give them rocket launchers, guns, and millions of dollars. And you tell them, go hurt so-and-so. So that's the Irani method. Pioneered by Qasim, may he rest in peace. And yeah. So a lot of these terror attacks that took over all over the world in the past like 20 years. So Nine times out of 10, they got their money. And Hamas, the ones that launched the rockets, 
at, at, at Israel, where did they get rockets from? Where? Where do you even get money from at all? Iran. And that's a fact they're not shy of. They personally admit it publicly, privately, whatever. They don't care. It's known. They'll tell you themselves. They get their money from Iran. They're not shy or hiding it. Neither is Iran hiding it. Iran might try to be like, yeah, we don't know. But come on. So the only reason there was a war between Saudi and Yemen, what happened in that war, it was not versus Yemen itself. It was versus Houthis. So Saudi is next to Yemen. Not what happened is Yemen, they had the whole like Arab Spring, took down the president. They weren't effing with him. He's out. Now it's a state of chaos. No government, no president. The Houthis come up. And the Houthis are, uh, they're on a Shia sect, you know, Shia Sunni. They're a Shia branch of Islam, which is minority, which is also the one that Iran goes by. Arabia is Sunni, the majority sect. Right next to Arabia happens all this chaos, and a group known as Houthis, who happen to be Shia, come up, and they're upholding Shia, and they're trying to, you know, so here comes Iran and gives this group of thugs millions of dollars, rockets, line, all that good stuff. And tell them to hurt Arabia. Iran's main enemies is the same one as all these terror groups, which is America, Israel. I'm not going to pretend that they... America, especially America. Okay, Israel, we all know why they happen to be the enemy. Not because they're Jewish. I love Jewish people. Shout out Benetegi. But right and right is and wrong is wrong. So now that I caught up on my history, I understand the beef between Iran and America slash Israel. I get it. <sighs> But the beef, the only reason the beef intensified with Arabia in the past, you know, decade or so, or decades, decades, you know, at times they were cool, at times they were not, because they were mad at America. Arabia and America are homies. So he's like, oh, you hanging with the white boy? Hit him too. Hmm? You know, Arabia, we don't take that. He's like, all right, I'll show you. You want to take that? Okay. And we did some war crimes over there. It is what it is. All right. Mass starvation, all type of stuff. But that's why I'm happy that the peace came. Because when you make peace with Iran, hopefully this Houthi problem will go away. Hopefully Yemen will be back uh, normal. But instead of earning Nobel Prizes and Kumbaya celebrate together, yeah, yeah. here comes Sleepy Joe and says, uh uh uh, MBS, don't make peace, bro. Chill. Pause that real quick. Tap the brakes. Mm-hmm. Why? Well, here's why. For one, Arabia <laughs> is very cool with the US, that's the homie. But Israel, eh, at least not publicly. The country of Islam cannot claim to be, yeah, we cool Israel. What? That's like turning your back on a whole Arab world. The only reason Arabia is so on, because they're the country of Islam, the Arab world, listen to them. So that's why the, that's why the normalization of relations with Israel is such a weird <laughs> but listen you are now watching AK Debris on YouTube and you're gonna see why Sleepy said tap the brakes so here you go Iran 
Arabia. Arabia is the homie, right? The friend of America, and not publicly, but soon to be publicly, or that was the plan. Israel. They were always at beef with Iran, and the intensity, and the beef intensified in the past 20 or 10 because of the relationship of Arabia and the white man. Iran, who claims to be super Muslim, found it to be uh, uh, out of pocket, a violation to be cool with America and Israel. So that's why they waged the war also on uh, Arabia, specifically at our places. As far as I know, no one, they announced them making peace and the visits happened. They did not become allies, as far as I know. The Western media have not even touched that topic. They didn't even come near it. They ignored it just like they ignored Sudan and all that good stuff. I don't expect much out of them. They did mention that Arabia plans to normalize relationship with Israel, which is a very controversial thing. In Arabia, to the Arabians and the whole Middle East in general, because the whole Middle East sees the existence of Israel as a as what it is, an invasion. Okay? And they know that Israel has been provoking it. Basically, they did ethnic cleansing on the people. They constantly, they did stuff I can't think of at the moment, but I might put it here or there. Or they've been pushing it. They go up, they round up kids, they brutality, they tarnish sacred sites, sacred Muslim sites. So the whole Arab world, the Muslim world, sees it as a... As a, as a the only thing that allows the existence of this uh, 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 immoral entity who provokes and, 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 and humiliates and does all type of wrongs. And, and admittedly, even by that CIA dude on the podcast, bro, he tells you. The only thing that allows the existence is their... American, you know, friendship. The fact that America allows Israel. That's what made America an enemy to a lot of, you know, uh, terror groups or even just regular people who feel, you know, it's the thing to hate. Nobody hates America. <laughs> what America do? The only time America became bad guys when they went and did what they did in Iraq. And that Bush era, you know? But the relationship always been good with Arabia. Americans can sleep at night peacefully because Arabia's over there putting the foot on a lot of people next, including Iran, through war or peace, and a lot of other people. When the Soviet, and let's not act like America and Arabia, the older, you know, whoever it was at the time, did not create Al Qaeda and it backfired on them. That's if it was them. With the nine slash one one, I don't want to say it. The September eleven in New York. Some people would try to be like, "Uh, oh, relax." Nine eleven was the only one you had, and that side of the world, there's nine eleven damn near daily. <laughs> okay, so let's chill out. These people are not Sims characters; they're humans. 
Back to our piece. Sleepy Joe, the Joe Biden administration goes up to Arabia and says, hey, over chill. Don't do it. Why, though? Because America has been trying to make peace between Israel and, and, and Saudi for years. But that's besides the point. But Iran has always been at odds with Israel. They never liked them. They never approved of their existence. They never had the, they never been cool enough with America. The only reason Arabia considered normalization with Israel is because America's there and they love America. They're cool. And if they wanted it to be normal, normal, MBS demanded some, 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 some conditions. The conditions are pretty heavy. They're not easy. It's like, okay, if you want it to be, uh, we need a nuke program. We need a lot. And the negotiations are still progress. Just like MBS went on Fox News or whatever. He went and said, it's in progress. Iran, they were told to make peace, to pause. He paused. He can't undo the peace he just made for no reason. It's stupid. And I don't care if Israel really want to want want peace for them and the reason, they got to let this one play out. I believe that Iran, and again, Hamas self-admittedly is financed by Iran. Or they got a job at McDonald's. They get their money from Iran, everything from Iran. The reason this happened now, why did this happen now? So, okay, Iran is like this. They just made peace with Arabia. They're not allies, but they're on a, the good guy list now <laughs> for Christmas. They're at least on terms. If they acted on Israel before, Arabia is right there. Arabia would have would have would have would have obliterated the living f out of them. They would have turned Ayatollah and Soleimani into dust. If you want to know. What Arabia is like in war, go to Jake Tran and you might, you gotta pay. It's one of his paid videos. Watch the one on Yemen. But the fact that they acted, now that they're on a good guy list, when America and Israel and all of them go to, because the war is basically with Iran, Hamas is just the, 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 the tool. That Iran used to attack. Right? Because who's the war with? Hamas? Hamas is a group of people. Even if Israel wipes out Hamas, Hezbollah is there, and there's infinity groups, they won't run out. And they will never run out until you stop giving them a reason to. I'm not defending terror. But I'm not defending Israel either. There's a reason these guys exist. And until that reason is addressed sufficiently by Israel, okay, they, were, they will never run out. It's the truth. And people like Iran, so Iran acted now because now they have Arabia 
unofficially or officially on their team. They've got peace with them. So when Israel goes to America, their big, their daddy, and they go over there with daddy to the big bad Iran and say, why, what the F, Iran, why would you do that? They got to ask, why would you do that? Back then, they would have just attacked. Because it's obvious. What I hope is you don't turn Lebanon into a proxy war like Ukraine or Yemen. It's enough. I don't like war at all, anywhere. So I'm against war. But the fact that, you know, let's not pretend that Oh, why would you attack Israel? This has been waiting to happen forever. It would have happened if Hamas did it, if Hezbollah did it. If, if someone would have did it at some point. So yeah, Netanyahu, you can retaliate. And you can do that. Yeah, they will never felt anything like we're about to feel. Cool. Well, if you wipe them out, then what? Israel is surrounded by enemies, bro. And they've been at war with the whole Middle East. But again, why? How about you fix the issues at hand? Make friends, not enemies. One of the main things MBS asked for, at least publicly, when it comes to making peace with Israel, it's like we got to deal with the with the with the with the Palestinian atrocities and unjustness. That's publicly. Privately, he asked for hey, we need a nuke, we need a Mercedes, and I want a bad B and a Mercedes, and I want her to have double D's. Privately, he get to ask for all that, but and he's right. <sighs> And now, I don't know, I'm waiting to see what MBS says because he's conflicted. Because he's not against Israel. Morally, he is. We all are. All right? But he just made peace with Iran. And even if America says back down... It's too long, bro. That beef has been expensive uh, in terms of money and lives, so I don't know. But that's who the war is with. It's with Hamas, but it's really with Iran. That's who's financing Hamas. And that's why I think they acted now. Okay? And I'm waiting to see what Arabia says or does, or whatever. And I hope that you don't turn it into World War III. We had enough wars. We should be progressing forward. Enough with the WEF nonsense. Please share this video, Bill C-11. You guys know what's happening in Canada. And I don't want to hear anybody talk about climate change or as if there's some people look down on me and then turn around and be like, I'm an activist for climate change. Nigga, smash the subscribe button. I'm out of here. You got people who can't even sit in their house without a missile hitting the house. And the worst thing you care about is climate change. Nigga, let it change. We need change. <laughs> a missile dropping on somebody innocent doesn't bother you. But climate change bother you? Let it change, motherfucker. You need to change what you're fighting for, so-called activists. Activate the fuck out of my face. I choose no sides. But I pray for the people on both sides.
keyword people, civilian. I have hope. I have hope. But what's right and right, what's right is right and wrong is wrong. I love Jewish people. I have Jewish friends. And a lot of them agree. Even if we disagree, we can be friends. But don't be so quick to go on Facebook and Instagram and be like, I stand with Israel. You don't even know who's Israel fighting or why. Before you stand with anybody, because some people are good, they're just misguided. How about you do some research?